is Patrick. I'm a data scientist in uh, Cloudflare, and today I'm going to uh, present you what uh, the Destination Earth Data Lake is. Uh, data Lake, which is one of the three main components uh, of the Destination Earth uh, initiative. Uh, so, uh, yesterday uh, opening session, uh, Destination Earth was uh, briefly mentioned, uh, but a quick reminder, uh, it is a flagship uh, initiative of uh, European Commission uh, to develop a, a replica, digital replica of, uh, of the Earth in order to model and uh, monitor natural events like hazards, like uh, floods, storms, uh, and so on, yeah? And uh, three huge institutions are involved uh, in order to develop uh, Destination Earth uh, uh, initiative. Uh, they are ECMWF, uh, UMEDSAT, and uh, ESA. And uh, each of these uh, institutions uh, is responsible for implementing uh, one key component of uh, destiny. Uh, then, uh, ECMWF is responsible for uh, developing digital twin engines. So, in fact, uh, the, mm, the platform, the service which provides digital twin data and produce it. Uh, core service platform, which is uh, developed by uh, ESA, uh, so-called DESP, which is the, uh, which is the point uh, where the journey of users with uh, Destination Earth uh, begins. And finally, uh, Destination Earth Data Lake, which is uh, provided by and developed by UMEDSAT, which is some kind of uh, backend, which is some kind of connection links between uh, digital uh, twins and uh, core service platform. Uh, and uh, four layers of, uh, of uh, services are included within uh, DDL. Uh, two of them uh, are concerned about data. Uh, they are discovery service and uh, data access service. Uh, the first one, uh, discovery service, uh, is dedicated to, uh, to all. In fact, you don't have to be even a user of the service uh, in order to, uh, to use it uh, because it's about searching collections, searching metadata of college collection, uh, so every one of you, even as a not registered user, uh, can do that. Uh, data access service uh, is about uh, um, searching items, uh, downloading items, also assets, uh, and four uh, services are included, uh, four tools are included within these uh, services. Uh, the third one uh, is a uh, big data processing services, so-called uh, edge services, uh, which is uh, which are cl cloud infrastructure, uh, application, and uh, processors. And the fourth one, uh, just uh, just help desk, uh, user service desk. Uh, so, uh, in a nutshell, uh, these two first uh, services are provided through the uh, harmonized data access, which is a version of uh, HDA, uh, which is the API for data discovery and data access. Um, it also provides storage and uh, data, including uh, digital twin outputs, a fresh data pool, uh, which is in fact uh, the whole Creodeas repository. Of course, I'm going to, to tell you more about it on the next slides. Uh, and user private, private data, which of course is not some sensitive data of the users, but uh, for example, some use cases which were developed by, uh, by users, early adopter users, uh, which uh, had uh, early access to the uh, DDL. Uh, processing services, uh, as I mentioned before, they are cloud uh, computing infrastructure, Jupyter Hub, and, uh, and processor, again, help desk, a very important part of uh, services. Uh, and this is uh, overall schema of uh, uh, of destination of data lake um, and as I said at the very beginning uh, journey starts with uh, this platform core service platform which is developed by ESA uh, through the desk user can communicate with uh, DDL data and DDL services um, and uh, actions which are performed by users uh, are in fact performed on cloud infrastructure cloud infrastructure which is uh, dedicated to this project uh, it is our solution. Mm, it is not provided by any hyperscaler. So, uh, in fact, it's uh, let's say it's our cloud within the within the DDL, mm, and we have five uh, cloud locations, site locations. Uh, in fact, at this very moment, we have two locations which are fully uh, fully operational. They are a central site located in Warsaw and Lumi Bridge located in uh, located in Kajani, Finland, in HPC. 
next to the HPC. Uh, the next uh, two ones are going also to be set up uh, next to the HPCs. I mean uh, Leonardo Bridge, which is going to be set in uh, Bologna, and uh, Mare Nostrum Bridge uh, in Barcelona. Um, and the, the fifth one, uh, the Umetsat Bridge, which is going to be set on um, uh, Darmstadt in the headquarters of uh, Umetsat. And uh, digital twin components, uh, it is mentioned uh, because uh, two already existing uh, digital twins, I mean Extreme DT and Climate DT, uh, are computed um, on uh, Lumi Bridge. So uh, this is why we, we, met, uh, we met on this slide also uh, digital twins. So uh, let's start with uh, specific components of uh, destination of data, data lake. The first one is uh, Harmonized Data Access Tool, uh, which uh, allows you to discover and access data. And uh, you can search over 170 collections right now. Mm, and uh, you can use only one set of credentials to get access to these data sets, yeah? Uh, again, uh, it's, it's also used to stack protocol, so you don't have to know API of each data providers. Uh, you can use one credentials, which is called federation, and use stack protocol to dive into uh, HDA and get uh, items you want to download these items and perform further uh, analysis. Uh, so if, uh, if you lose focus, I hope that the best movie ever bring you back here. Uh, but it's not any presentation trick or something like that, because uh, Federation and Sauron has much in common, because one rule was created to rule them all. And in Federation case, in HDA case, we have one set of credentials which are designed to connect, to communicate with uh, many, many uh, services. Uh, so, what, what are these services? Uh, as I said, uh, firstly, federated collections. Oh. Federated collections. Uh, secondly, Polytope, which allows you to communicate with uh, digital twin outputs. However, Polytope also could be uh, used through the HDA, so you don't have to know how to uh, Polytope works because you can use HDA. Uh, Fresh Data Pool uh, allows you native access to S3 buckets provided by Creo Dias. This uh, Fresh Data Pool uh, contains Sentinel's data, Copernicus data, Smos data. Uh, it's something like 50 petabytes of data. So uh, you, can, you can also access directly the uh, S3 buckets using this uh, HDA access. Uh, similar situation with uh, user-generated data pool. Uh, as I said before, this is data generated by users during some uh, use cases uh, or something like that, yeah? And uh, through the Federation, uh, you have an access to, to digital twins, to Sentinel's missions, uh, Copernicus services like CAMS, like Coper uh, Climate Data Store, uh, also Eurostat data. So you are not uh, only allowed to searching and downloading uh, data strictly dedicated to, to, to geodata, let's say, yeah, but also some uh, statistical data. And a few words about uh, storage. Uh, Extreme DT output uh, uh, takes like uh, 1.5 terabytes of data uh, daily. Uh, climate DT, it's, it's hard to say about uh, how much it takes uh, every day. However, annually it takes about uh, 8 petabytes of uh, storage. Uh, fresh data pool, uh, in fact, should be, uh, should be updated because right now it's uh, more than a 50 petabytes, I think. Uh, similar situation with uh, federated data. It's uh, much more than the uh, 50 petabytes of uh, data right now. <coughs> and uh, this is the example of uh, digital twin output. Mm, this is the map of air temperature for Poland uh, taken in March or February. I don't, don't remember exactly. Uh, however, you can see what are possibilities of uh, digital twin data. Yeah, uh, Somewhere over here, there is Vistula River, there is Book River, and you can see that uh, over Rivers Valley, there is, uh, there is warmer, yeah, that uh, over surrounding area. And uh, it was impossible to take such observation using uh, ERA-5 uh, data, for example, yeah? So uh, digital twin data in uh, resolution uh, four kilometers uh, bring you new, new possibilities to, to analysis of uh, meteorological factors. 
And uh, this is the comparison between uh, ERA-5 and uh, digital twin output uh, <coughs> uh, total precipitation uh, parameter. And uh, again, you can see uh, that uh, digital twin, extreme digital twin, meet, uh, meet its uh, goals. Yeah? The, the goal was to find some Mm, anomalies, some uh, meteorological phenomena uh, which could be uh, dangerous. And in this case, uh, digital twin, due to digital twin, you can observe uh, heavy rainy uh, cells over, uh, over the area. Again, it was not possible uh, using uh, ERA5 data. Uh, and about, uh, it was all about data. Now time for uh, edge services, the first one, uh, stack service. Uh, stack service, which in fact is uh, Jupyter Lab environment uh, set on uh, each cloud. Uh, as I said before, for now it's set on uh, two clouds, so uh, central site in Warsaw and uh, Lumi in uh, HPC Kayani. Mm, and it allows you to use uh, Jupyter Lab environment to create and set, uh, deploy your own uh, Dask uh, cluster. Uh, you can use HDA through the, uh, through the stack, you can use uh, API. Uh, of, of HDA PyStack, EODAC, because EODAC is also implemented uh, within, uh, within JupyterLab here. If you participated in uh, Monday's workshop as, about uh, EODAC, you, you know how powerful tool it is. Yeah? So it's also implemented within uh, JupyterLab. Uh, the next service is, uh, is Hook. Hook, which is a set of predefined uh, processors which allows users to uh, set some task jobs uh, due to these ready-to-use uh, processors. Uh, and results are returned uh, to uh, private S3 storage or temporary S3 storage. Uh, among this, this processor, I think that the most important is uh, data harvest, which allows users to find data through the HDA. Uh, and uh, download this data uh, to, to private S3 storage uh, of the user or to the temporary storage. In this case, uh, user is provided with URL to the um, uh, to, to, to results. Uh, other, uh, other hooks, uh, they are dedicated to Sentinel-1, backscattering, uh, coherence. It is also possible to perform atmospheric correction due to uh, send to core or Maya uh, processor. So, uh, hooks allows you to, to, make it, uh, to make it easy. You don't have to perform all of this analysis by your own. Uh, it is also possible for user to create their own mm, custom hooks, uh, so uh, user is not uh, only limited to, to the hooks which are provided by uh, DDL. Uh, and the last one, uh, Islet Compute. Mm, Islet Compute, which in fact is uh, cloud infrastructure. It is divided into two parts, uh, islet compute uh, and uh, islet storage. As I said before, uh, the cloud which is deployed within this uh, project, within uh, Destination Earth, uh, is based on our own solution, uh, own solution which is uh, based on uh, OpenStack, which is uh, open, soft, uh, open source project also. Uh, through the islet, we provide uh, pre-configured uh, uh, images, which contains a lot of uh, ESGO tools, ESGO software. Uh, it is provided uh, as a virtual machines with VPU or GPU. A user is also allowed to, to create uh, his own uh, Kubernetes clusters. And this is the first part. And the second part is uh, islet storage. Again, it's, it's uh, our solution. Uh, it provides access to, um, to storage and manage this uh, S3 storage. Uh, and that was all. Uh, I encourage you to to visit this website if you want to verify how to use uh, HDA, Stack, Hook. Uh, uh, on this GitHub, we provide many, many Jupyter notebooks which are already available to the users, so you can, uh, you can use it. Mm. What is more, I am also encourage you to visit uh, in the Expo area, there is a destination of stands, so uh, you, can find, uh, you can find someone over there. And uh, please remember that uh, destination Earth in general and uh, Destination Earth data lake, it's not about uh, data. The goal was not to provide another entry point uh, for downloading and searching data, yeah? Uh, it is also services, uh, services, applications, cloud, yeah? Uh, and, and that's all, thank you very much.
I apparently scared Patrick into finishing his talk in only 15 minutes. So we we're able to do quite a few questions. Anyone? Hi, um, I'm Peter here. Um, thanks for the great talk and for the introduction to the Destination Earth Data Lake. Um, my question would be, um, what is the difference between the Destination Earth Data Lake and the Copernicus uh, data space ecosystem? Um, let's say from a user perspective, or maybe also from a strategic perspective, what is the difference? Why do both of them exist and how do they maybe even harmonize together? Uh, okay, thank you for your question. Uh, so, Copernicus data space ecosystem uh, aims mainly to provide data, yeah? It's, uh, it's a main entry point for Sentinel data, Copernicus data uh, at all. So, I think it's the biggest difference because uh, Copernicus data space ecosystem, of course, uh, there are some uh, services also like cloud and uh, Jupyter notebooks, yeah, but the main goal of uh, Copernicus data space ecosystem is uh, provide data. Uh, I can talk about it because also in cloud for we provide uh, CDSC, yeah, so uh, on the other hand, uh, as I said, uh, DDL and Destination Earth is, uh, is more about uh, services, uh, outputs from some analysis, machine learning, yeah, uh, we are at the very beginning stage, so there are only two digital twins. Uh, but uh, mm, in the future, we will be we will provide it with uh, much more twins, and I think uh, this is the difference that uh, DDL and Destination Earth is about uh, some outputs, uh, results of analysis, uh, also this cloud infrastructure. Yeah, uh, not uh, of course two, but not uh, only and not mainly about uh, providing data. So thank you for again for this very interesting talk. Um, maybe a follow-up question to this one from my side would be if we think about services and, and basically applications that build on top of uh, the data present in um, the data lake, um, we all know that sometimes we need more information than is present in, in one data lake. Um, and I think the Green Deal data spaces, for example, are also working on this topic. Is there plans to connect to the Green Deal data spaces also? And can users bring their own data in a way to the destination Earth? Uh, I know that uh, Green Deal is, uh, is a part of uh, another. Uh, that DDL and destination Earth is a part and aims to participate in uh, Green Deal uh, activities. What about these data spaces? Uh, I think it meets requirements of, of data spaces because we mm, don't uh, store this data. Yeah, we don't um, want to create another uh, another storage, but uh, connect with uh, mm, other providers. Uh, so I think that. Uh, Maybe, I don't know, personally, to be honest, I don't know if we already uh, within, the, within this uh, data spaces, but I think that uh, Destination Earth and DDL meets requirements of uh, data spaces. Did you have one? Oh. It's, it's also a follow-up uh, to the previous question. So, so with these different data lakes and data clouds, um, sharing all these resources, um, it may be a challenge to have like a persistent identification of a, of a thing. Did you consider to use a facade like DOI to, to identify resources, uh, resources within your lakes? Uh, could you say again, please? <laughs> uh, so so, so in academia, it's, it's quite useful to have uh, like DOI uh, URLs pointing to resources in, in a lake. Did you consider such an approach? Uh, I know that we want to um, federate to, to much more uh, much more endpoints, yeah, including including academia, including uh, ready to use data. Yeah, we don't want to uh, make something completely new. Yeah, the, the goal of the destination Earth is to use data which already exists to in order to create some outputs uh, in respect to climate adaptation and and so on and so on. 
Can I? Uh, so my question would be, uh, do you provide also any uh, tools specific for uh, um, artificial intelligence, like large language models? Uh, thank you for this question. Uh, it is not already implemented because we just ended phase one, I think, one week ago, maybe. Uh, and in the phase two, uh, which is going to be we finished in 18 months, uh, it is going to, there are going to be provided tools for MLAI. 